guys, it's Savar from Scrappy Mania, and today I'm gonna my tutorial for today is gonna be creating a nice simple Christmas card. Now I've been very busy creating cards for the last two or three days because I do have these two paper stack, and you also have seen some of my other videos where I've used these paper stack to create some of my Christmas layouts that old Christmas layouts that I have not had time to put on a page. Well, i be using this one, which is My Mind's Eye or Christmas Tree. And i also been using this one, My Mind's Eyes and the Signature Christmas. It's the Holiday Glitter Book. Both of them are gorgeous papers. They have a lot of glitter and a lot of dimension. Now, I do have a lot of paper because there's 54 sheets in each of these pads. So, I want to get caught up on my Christmas cards. So, this year, I'm going to create homemade cards. So that's what I've been doing for the last two or three days, just taking a lot of the bits and pieces left over from some of my layouts. Plus, even with that, I have tons left over. As you can see, there's lots of lots of paper there. So I am going to create more, more layouts and more cards. Um, but let me show you what I've done so far. Now, this is one of my first ones. Now, just to let you know, I'm not the greatest card maker. I do make nice layouts. I think I got that one down packed, but when it comes to card, uh, I'm not the greatest. But this is one of my first ones. So I took an embossing folder and I created a, a tree and then I embossed the paper underneath and I put that tree with foam adhesive on top of the card in a regular plain green cardstock. So this is one of my first prototype. As you can see there, and I put some ribbon and I colored it. I'm just playing with it. It's okay. It's not, a, not, not one of my best. So that's one card. Then I started getting a little better. So here I took some of that paper from the paper stad, stack. I matted it. Um, well, actually, I took the piece of paper and cut it. Now, this, this is a, an 11 by 8.5 card stock that I cut down to five and a half by four and a quarter um, card blank. So I created my own card blanks by just cutting down the card stock. So this is one of my later ones that I created and I used to and I've been pulling all my stamps that I have laying around. This is one of my stamps and I embossed it, put a little bit of glitter glue, create some embellishments there and that one came out pretty nice. So here's another card that I created. What I did is I took some post-it note, I used my circle punch, I cut a circle, I put it I put it in the center here, off center here. Then I took some more of my um, post-it note and I outlined the top, did the same thing to the bottom, took some of my inking um, sponge and I used bordering blue from Stamping Up and Midnight. Na Night of Navy from Stamping Up and that's what I use to kind of like give it this um, background and then what I did is I tore some sheets of my post-it note and I laid the torn sheets on the card while I used my sponge to put some color and then I outline it those hills and valleys with a little bit of glitter glue like you can see there I put a little sentiment and then I mounted that on a regular black piece of cardstock so this is one of my other cards that I created here's another card that I created so I emboss the panel the, the card blank in the back then I put a panel with another panel and I embossed a strip of paper which I cut as a banner and then here's one of my um, stamps. So what I usually do is I, this stamp had a saying that says, you, let's, let's celebrate. So I cut that out and then I use these to create my own sentiments. Because I do like the frame, I may not want the saying, let's celebrate. And that's what I did with all these stamps. So if you want to know um, to extend the uses of your stamp is you can cut the sentiment out from the center like this one says you're invited and then I can use this and I'm also can use this on its own and now this was a whole piece as you can see here this was a whole piece of a stamp but I wanted to be able to use the top and the bottom and put any saying in the middle so you just cut them so you cut the top 
you cut the bottom so now I can use this in anything so I can put you know a different seine in the middle and then I can use this for the top and the bottom to kind of frame my seine and I did the same thing with the one at the bottom here so that's what I did for here so I cut that out and I used that to create my own little seine this is another card card um, card that I created by I embossed the background I glimmer missed it I have an embossing folder one of the Anna Griffin embossing folder that's a form of a tree I cut that out I put it with foam dots and then I put I stamped a saying with a little bit um, and cut that out with a spellbinder die so not too bad I mean I, I, I'm telling you I'm not the greatest card maker this one I use a big stamp a stupendous stamp and what I did is I went ahead and used some of my washable markers. It's these ones. I was playing with these. So I stamped it first. Then I colored the, um, the piece. And then I took my water and I just missed it because I wanted to have those blooms. And I wanted to kind of look kind of a little distressed a little bit. I was just playing with my markers and my water and my watercolor paper. Then I cut it out. I framed it on here. Now this, as you can see there, it was used. I used a Cricut and I used a paper lace too. And what I did is I took some vellum and I run it through the Cricut and then I created, um, you can see it in the background, I created these frames. And I made it, this, I made the side four and a quarter by five and a half so that way I can frame it. On another piece of paper and do something like that that's the background and yeah I covered it up you know because I was scrapping with my sister and she said well you spent all that time doing that design now you covered it up with your poinsettia and my saying but you can still see it so another experimentation so this is another card then this is another card which I did letter press so I took my embossing folder I put some um, some ink on the raised area of my embossing folder and then I embossed it and it creates that little press impression here's another spellbinder die here's a saying holiday greetings and I put those um, little swirls on top and at the bottom and I cut it out and I put a little banner here's another one of a Christmas tree I put a Christmas you know I cut it um, three Christmas tree and the way to cut perfect Christmas see how it's perfect is that if you fold your paper over like so okay you take a pair of scissors and then you snip it from an angle and then work your way up like so you create a perfect Christmas tree if I were to cut it by hand let's say I do like this and then I just you know draw hand draw it and then cut it sometimes it's not as perfect the Christmas tree is not as perfect I did a pretty good job on that one but sometimes it doesn't come out that perfect believe me so I found that folding it in half and then cutting it at an angle works best, best for me because I sometimes have issues with it so that's what I did with these I embossed the background, I mounted that in another um, mat, gold mat, and then I put that on a piece of the holiday cardstock with another saying and some more um, cardstock with the same mat that I used for the background. So there's my other card, and then I just put some gems. This is the one by far of all of them. I think my best is this one it's nice and simple I really like this one and I want to show you how to create this because it's very very simple and you can do it with anything that you have around so let me go ahead and get started the material I used for that one was I used this Swiss dot cuddlebug folder and I this is universal if you don't have a Swiss dot folder I think you should get one it really gives a you know it's it's not themed there's you know it's not a theme folder like a holiday folder or Christmas folder or with hearts and things like that 
it's just a universal folder that you can use with anything and it really gives your projects a nice little look as you can see there you can do it for anything so I have that then I need I got a, a strip of paper this is gonna be for my scallops so you need to cut it um, four and a quarter actually that's gonna go down here let me see it's gonna frame this piece underneath it's gonna be the scallop underneath and this is four by one inch so this is a four by one inch so this one you can cut it four by one inch or four by one and a half and it and, and doesn't matter because you're gonna use a scallop punch so you're gonna need a scallop punch or some any kind of edge punch to give it a nice little edge at the bottom so I'm gonna use this knockout that I purchased that Tuesday morning and that's gonna be for my scallop then you're gonna need another panel so this panel actually measures five and a quarter by four inches this panel measures five and a half by four and a quarter and then of course you need your card blank which is this one and you're gonna need some green cardstock and I'm using this this green cardstock from my mind's eye old Christmas tree collection and I'm using this Martha Stewart um, punch it's a fern punch so any kind of leafy fern punch that you have will work for this you can even do it with just a regular leaf punch it will work as well but you want to make sure that the leaves are small you don't want to have a humongous leaf for your wreath because your your card is small so you don't want something the measurement to be um, disproportion and then you're gonna need some type of ribbon I'm gonna use some red ribbon for this next card so let's go ahead and get started the first thing I want to do is I'm gonna get my card base ready so I'm gonna fold it in half now I am going to take my cardstock the one that I'm going to um, create the scallop edge and I'm just going to punch the scallop out now I do like these knockouts because you can buy other knockouts um, you can buy the the inner piece and you can change up the look by buying the different pieces so you can just take this out and then you can put a new piece in there, a new knockout. Now I am going to go ahead and put a sentiment there. And I have this sentiment, greeting sentiment by Fisker, which I purchased at Tuesday morning. And it has a lot of the nice saying on it. I think I'm going to use this one that says Holi Happy Holidays. Place that there. And I might go ahead and stamp this, swipe it down, and then pat. And that really makes sure that you have a lot of ink on your pat, on your um, stamp. And then what I did is I used some silver ink off camera, and I stamped a little rounded um, snowflake. And I cut it. I cut the snowflake by hand and just placed it with a foam dot right next to the happy holidays now I'm gonna go ahead and take my card my one of my panels and I'm gonna use a Swiss dot to create that embossing element so now we need to create the circle for our reef okay so I have this EK success and it's a glass cutter that I purchased um, when it was on clearance and I like using this because to create my circle, I need a circle cutter. And sometimes when you put your piece on, like when you put this piece on, it will move. It moves around. You can tape it down, but what I find that works very well is a glass mask that you put some repositional adhesive to kind of hold your piece down. So it will not move while you cut your shape. So it's, it's adhered down on my cutting mat. I'm going to cut the inner circle first. So I'm using a 2 13 2 and 3 fourth inch. And just make sure that you cut the smaller circle first before you cut the larger circle. 
so that way it, it won't move on you. Now I'm going to go ahead and punch out a lot of these ferns. So now that I have all my ferns punched out, I'm going to go ahead and place one layer first around this ring. And then I'm going to build up from there. I'm going to put another layer. And usually I put at least three layers of fern or or leaves, whatever you have, just because I wanted to make it look full. And with a craft, using a craft mat, it helps that you can peel it off easily. So now I, once I put this panel that has been embossed with a Swiss dot embossing folder, I felt like it needed another layer of paper. So I found this gold, the silver um, paper. And then I'm using my um, Perfect Layers ruler to cut a thin little outline or thin little border on this panel. But then as you're going to see in a moment, when I do place it back on my my first panel or my layer, it was just too large. So I went ahead and used my scissors to just cut it, cut another thin um, layer off of it. So now it, it, it's going to look good. So I'm going to place that first on the first layer on the first panel. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue this whole panel to my card base. So once I have it down, and I'm using, uh, the reason why I'm using some liquid adhesive because I really want to make sure that it adheres well onto the card base. So I'm just going to use a little more of this adhesive and I'm going to place my saying in my border. And now I'm ready to place my wreath above my saying or my title. And um, then I, I'm going to go ahead and create a bowl. And yeah, I'm going to put the link for the tutorial where I show you how to create a, a bowl maker with just some um, screw, screwers and a cardboard. And that helps you that you can make a perfect bow each and every time. So click below for the tutorial on how to create that bow maker. So I'm going to use some pop dots or some glue dots to place the bow on my card stock on my um my card. And I'm done with this. This oh, there's my card. So I hope you enjoyed this card. It's a little different than this one, but about the same. So I hope you enjoyed this card, and thank you for watching. Bye now.